Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Charles Delastic. I'm the Managing Director of Blue Bond Tax Planning. We've been inheritance tax specialists for more than 18 years now, having helped hundreds of clients through their estate planning and inheritance tax. So today's video is all around the benefits of a lifetime trust as opposed to a will trust. Now, most solicitors will recommend will trusts and what we're going to cover today is the difference between a will trust and a lifetime trust and why I believe that lifetime trusts offer huge value and are significantly better, especially for people with high value estates which exceed over a million pounds. So why do solicitors recommend will trusts? Well, usually a will trust is set up and created by a will and it's normally a discretionary trust. Now, the benefits of these is that it basically means that a person's entire assets fall into the trust as opposed to going directly to their beneficiaries on death. Now, the main point of that is that a trust will generally last 125 years from inception and the trust is able to make loans from the trust to the beneficiary. So why should you do that? Well, the main advantage is, is it protects the assets. So let's say that when you die, all your assets go into a trust and then the assets are then loaned to your children with a, a proper document drawn up to say that the money, so let's say half a million pound is loaned to your children. Now, in the event of a divorce of your children, potentially half the money that you've given them could, could walk if you used a normal will. But if you had the loan trust and it loaned the money to the beneficiaries, then that loan could be recalled by the trustees and after the divorce is settled, then the money could be gifted back out. So it protects the assets in the long term for children. Now, divorce isn't the only issue. There are four or five other issues and we cover that in depth in our video, which is called Why Estate Planning is More Important Than Inheritance Tax Planning. So what essentially is the difference between a will trust and a lifetime trust? Well, they're both discretionary trusts, first of all, but the main issue is, is that a will trust is set up on death. For a trust to exist, you have to have trustees, beneficiaries, and you also need to have a settlement occur. So in a will trust, the settlement is the assets that are left on death, and that's what goes into the trust. However, within a lifetime trust, the settlement occurs immediately during lifetime, and normally it's as little as £10, which is actually put into the trust. Therefore, the trust exists from the date that it's set up because the settlement occurs immediately. That's the essential difference. Okay, so if the trust can be set up with as little as £10, what then happens? What's the point of that? It basically means the trust is set up immediately and that's the, that's the issue. The rest of your assets would pass to the trust on death. Now, one of the advantages is that once the trust is set up, you can, of course, use it to gift assets during your lifetime. So let's say you were going to, you wanted to reduce the value of your estate for inheritance tax and you were happy to make an outright gift of money to your children, rather than giving it to them directly, because if you give it to them directly and they get divorced, obviously that's a problem, right? Because half the money would walk. Whereas if you gift it to the trust and then the trust lends the money to them as previously stated, then that asset is protected. So reducing the estate value is one potential issue. The other potential issue is you may decide that you want to downsize the value of your home and therefore you have money in your late 70s or whatever to gift out to your children. It's exactly the same scenario. The main point here is, is that with a lifetime trust is if you make a gift into the trust and then you live seven years, 
then you could use your new rate band allowance more than once because once you've made the gift into trust and you've lived more than seven years, your new rate band is reinstated again effectively and that's one of the major advantages. Another advantage which most people don't anticipate, but for the wealthy, this is quite a good idea. So let's just say um, you have a couple and one person dies and then you've got the other spouse remaining and then all of a sudden they're taken ill and you think, hmm, okay, they're not likely to live more than a year or six months or even a few weeks. Well, frankly, because the trust already exists, you can give some money into the trust immediately. Now, if that drops the estate value below two million, that means that the residential new rate band is fully available. And for each residential new rate band, it being fully available means that that's £70,000 saved in the inheritance tax. Now, that gift, if it was a deathbed planning thing, would fail as a gift into a trust because it would fail for inheritance tax purposes, but it still would reinstate the residential new rate band. And therefore, that would be worthwhile. The main benefit, however, of a lifetime trust is that it uses the existing rules. You know what the rules are when you place your £10 in. So trusts, generally, if there are changes to the taxation of trust, it says from now on. And really, the point of having a trust set up during lifetime is that it gives you a much higher level of certainty as to what the rules are, as opposed to having it written in your will, which you know, could be 20 years from now or 30 years from now that you die and you've got no idea how it's going to change because the trust doesn't exist until the settlement takes place. Okay, so higher certainty is important. Okay, so why really is a lifetime trust better in my opinion than a will trust? Well, first of all, you can make gifts during lifetime, use your nil rate band more than once and still protect the assets. That's a major benefit. As I've just explained, the deathbed planning is also important. Also, you know what the costs are because you've set it up during your lifetime and you can estimate whether it's worth it for yourself or it isn't. Whereas if the trust is set up on death, there may be all sorts of costs and then they've got to find solicitors who can deal with it and have the expertise, really. So deathbed planning is important, but knowing the cost is also important. But I think the main reason that most people do it is the high level of certainty very very simply that you know what the rules are and they're very unlikely to change because the settlement exists and therefore the trust is registered and exists and therefore it's unlikely that people go that the hmrc go backwards and change the rules for for existing trusts okay so that's the benefit of lifetime trusts over will trusts I hope you enjoyed that video and if you found it useful, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel if you're interested in inheritance tax planning. But thanks for listening and bye for now.